everybody, this is Danny. And I'm Marco, and welcome to our thoughts on the OnePlus One. All right, so what have we had this for, like, two uh, weeks now? Yeah, so we've had these for, for two weeks, and um, actually, I think we should start off with how we got these because we just got these like as normal people we didn't get yeah. this from press uh these aren't from oneplus themselves we actually bought these for our own money yeah. it's not like i didn't try though yeah. i hit them up they didn't hit me well, I, I don't know but we did buy these with our own money so we want to talk about the oneplus and how it's been performing for us for the last two weeks now that we've had this phone yeah um so i think we should start with the good uh first i want to talk about the, the, the box actually we, I was super impressed. I think Dom from Mac Mixing said how the packaging was amazing, and he got his uh, a couple days before I did, and he, we, I think we got the same, no? You got yeah. it a couple days before me too. Yeah. Uh, but I was really impressed by the way it, this was packaged up. It was a little weird having like a separate thing for the, for the AC charger, but I mean, the box was awesome. Actually, I like that. I think it was a great presentation as a whole, like just the way that they had the boxes, and it was really simplistic packaging. It was just real elegant, and for that big deal of only being $299, the packaging was $699. Oh, yeah. It was way up there, and that's one thing that was super impressive about this device. It, it definitely had like an oppo feel, but it had that little fling that OnePlus had. Because, I mean, technically, if you peel back this phone, it's a oppo fine 7A, right? I mean, yeah, literally almost. like a 7A internally here. It's a um, fine seven because it has three gig. Well, this one has three gig. Yeah. Of RAM. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you got that. So I mean, it's a fine seven with a ten eighty with, with a seven A display. Yeah. True. So it's not terrible. Um, but other than that, yeah, the box was awesome. I mean, it was a great device. Uh, and then the, the second thing that really got me was just the texture. Uh, and this is the sandstone black one. It's the 64 gigabyte model. It's 349. And I mean, again, it feels like I thought it felt like velvet. Um, I'm kind of uh, mixed with the actual texture itself because it's, uh, I don't know, it kind of feels like a soft sandpaper. That's how, that's how I feel that it feels like. It It has texture at the same time, but at the same time it's kind of slippery, kind of dry. I don't uh, think it's slippery. It's just, um, I don't think I've ever felt a phone like this. And that's the biggest thing. I mean, this is, this is a phone that I've never felt before. And it really feels like a new phone to me. Like, it doesn't feel like a Galaxy S5 or, you know, this is like an LTE A Galaxy S5. This one feels like a Galaxy S5, like a phone I've ever I've, I've yeah. used before. This one feels like a completely new experience for me. It does. There's no other texture that's like this on any other phone, that's for sure. Now, the only bad thing about this uh, on the back texture is they are making replaceable back covers for this. Yes. But the back cover is is, is this ridiculously hard to take off. You have I haven't to pull managed off the to mine tray. Yeah. You have to pull it. It's really hard to take off there. I guess it's the only one downside. But build materials and build quality wise, I promise you, this is one of the best built phones that I've seen for and especially in this price range is pretty amazing right it's got this cool uh, chrome accent on the outside of it um, very thin uh, feels really good in the hand actually it's weighty uh, I just like the way it feels so build quality I'm gonna give it an A plus I would say yeah and one actually cool thing is this, this is impossible to scratch on the back like I mean if you have like a weird scratch all you have to do is kind of just like wipe it yeah, but the thing is that I guess if you were to get deeper stains on here, it'd be yeah. a little bit harder to clean yeah. off here because this texture is kind of weird. But no fingerprints? No, yeah, no, that's the yeah, thing. no fingerprints at all. If you like uh, having a clean looking back of the phone, this is a good phone for you. All right, so uh, let's talk about the display. Um, so it's basically an Oppo Find 7A display, right? Yeah. Technically, it's an LG panel, right? Yeah, it, I think it, so. I think so. Technically, it is the same screen, but for some reason, I feel like this panel is a little bit sharper than the 7A. What do you think? It It's more color balanced. I think there's a couple problems with the 7A when it came with the display colors. Uh, remember, you had a white Oppo Find 7A, I had a black Oppo Find, or have, I had that bluish whatever color that was, and yours looked so much better than mine. Yeah, it was definitely calibrated differently, and this one I think is calibrated perfectly, actually. Yeah. It looks really good. Um, like I was saying, with some of the higher quality panels these days, it looks like the text is kind of coming out at you. And uh, it's a very clear display, very bright display as well. Right. And that's the one thing that uh, I was very impressed with. So. No, I mean, I, I can't really ask for a better display. Yeah, no, It's a good display. display. I don't like the bezels, but you can't really get apart from that. The bezels are huge. Um, you do have an option for on-screen buttons, so if I think, I think they should have just cut this whole section out. 
but obviously they couldn't really do that because this is basically an Oppo Find 7A. Well, the thing, I think the reason why they did that is they wanted to give you the choice between the software buttons and the capacitor button, so you have that choice there, but right. it does make this phone extremely tall. This is a problem. big phone, and I, mean, I, I blame LG for that. Mainly because I mean, this has the same size display as the LG G3. But the G3 is a whole lot smaller because it's basically, you know, edge to edge glass. This yeah. isn't edge to edge glass. I mean, you can totally see the bezels on the side, even the sides. I think the side bezels are pretty big too. I yeah. mean, they're about, let me see the S5 real quick. So this is the S5. Yeah, they're about the same size as the S5. Yeah, so really, you just got a taller device here. But besides that, it's pretty thin though, so it's pretty easily manageable, I think. Yeah. I mean, not one-handed, maybe, but I have yeah. small hands, so. I'd say it's a two-handed device for sure, but it feels good in the hand, so once again, display, you will not be disappointed with display, so yeah. that's where I think this is a huge win. We look at the display all the time, so this is that's the, one of the most important things about a phone, period, and this one has a fantastic display. Well, if you guys didn't know, the big deal about this phone really is because it is $299, no contract, and it has pretty much monster specs. I mean, Snapdragon 801 processor, three gigs of RAM, uh, Adreno 330 GPU. I mean, it's got pretty much everything that you would want on this phone. Yeah. I mean, 13 megapixel camera on the back, 4K recording, along with DCI. DCI standard I mean, that's 4K. crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if you haven't uh, checked out my video on the uh, DCI 4K samples, it's actually got really good color balance. Uh, it's actually got a good dynamic range, which is kind of crazy uh, for a cell phone camera. So really- yeah. And it, it actually to... looks good. Yeah. Like, this is a good looking phone. I can't even tell you how many people have come up to me and asked, like, what is that? Because they've never seen something, but the reason why they ask is because it looks really good. Like, yeah, it does. Even the white one looks good. Well, one, I, I prefer the black one. One of the reasons why people ask what it is is because it's kind of that unicorn phone, phone right now. You can't even buy this thing. No, I mean, you can't no. even say unicorn, right? But unicorn phone right now, <laughs> I mean... You can't buy this without an invite, so I mean, it's uh, that's the one thing I'm kind of disappointed about is that their production and the way that they marketed this phone and like the marketing is good and the phone is good, but if you can't buy it, then how good is it? Right. I mean, I know, I know a lot of you guys could be asking for invites. We don't have any. Yeah. We so. had we had one invite and we had to buy it for ourselves, obviously, because we wanted to review this phone. Um, and I mean, they're doing like what they're doing a giveaway right now for 2,500 give uh, invites. I think that's over. I'm not sure. I don't know if that's over or not. But really, in the end, I wish they would have been able to make this available to the masses yeah. quicker. Because if you want to buy this right now and you want this phone, you should be able to buy it, right? Right. I think everyone who's watching this video who really seriously wants to consider buying a, a One Plus One would go ahead and put up that money for pre-order for them to even produce the phone. Because I mean, we're thinking the only reason why there's an invite system is because they wanted to keep demand high and supply low because we really can't, physically they can't make enough well yeah and plus i mean how how much profit do you think they actually have Not building much. a monster smartphone I mean, like they, this for yeah. 299 bucks i mean the margin is either either extremely thin or none uh, yeah. so this yeah, is right. uh that's one of the reasons too and that's a big problem for this phone but if you can get your hands on this phone then i think you will like it just as much as we do i don't like it a hundred percent you gotta we gotta remember that that's There's true. a couple problems, and I and I really want to do point these out. Um, but actually, let's dive into the software because the One Plus One is really strange. So unlike the Oppo Find Seven and Find Seven A running uh, four point two, four point three, four point three, whatever, the same thing. Um, with Color OS, this is running four point four two uh, KitKat, but it has CyanogenMod Eleven S, which is the latest version of CyanogenMod. It's actually fantastic. Like yeah. there is nothing wrong with the software. There's a couple bugs, mainly it's, I mean, I, I really can't even point them out. I don't even remember. There's a couple bugs that I found in the settings, but that I think that's because different themes that I've downloaded. But other than that, it's been like almost a flaw-free Cyanogen mod. Film. Yeah, and I know that uh, Cyanogen team has been working really hard. Uh, I remember when the pre-production units were out, there were a lot of bugs, but uh, they really I remember worked the a Oppo, lot of those out. Yeah. I remember the Oppo N1. It was, I mean, it was great, but there were so many bugs on that phone. Yeah. This is literally the best Cyanogen mod phone I've used. Yeah. It's one of the top Android phones I've used. Yeah, and what I really like about the software is that you don't really have to do anything to it at all. All the customizations are right in the OS itself. You yeah. want to change your theme, it's a couple clicks away. It's fast, actually lightning fast. Uh, you have just all kinds of options to make it look however you want it. Right now, uh, we both have the uh, Android L theme that's on here, mm -hmm. and it looks absolutely fantastic. And um, 
Android L. Yeah. yeah, it looks really, really good. And I think that you can customize this however you want to and make it look however you want. And there's so many things in the settings that you can do to this phone. It's amazing what kind of customization you get it right out of the box. I mean, so I think software experience is definitely an A plus for me. I love stock Android and this is basically stock Android plus, I would call it. It just has all the extra features that stock Android does not have. And this is just a great platform. And I think that's one of the weaknesses maybe of the Oppo phones right now. Because their Find 7 is a great phone, but software-wise, if it ran it's 11S yeah. right it's out locking. of the box, I think it'd be a knockout as well. So I think software on here, fantastic. Well, Can't complain. One, yeah, it's, Can't I'm complain. serious. It's one of the best, and I don't say that about a lot of Android phones. Yeah, and plus it's already gotten two updates since I've gotten this phone. So that's actually good too, because they are constantly updating. So Cyanogen team is working really hard to make it a good experience. Right. And I think they actually said something today. I read that they will get Android L within three months of uh, production uh, Android L. As soon as Android L is available to the public, that this will get updated within three months. Not the fastest, but at least they're already on track to update this to Android. Yeah. yeah. So, no, I mean, that's, I mean, that's good. Great. That's great. And uh, I think this is, I think Cyanogen is actually really they're paying so much attention to the OnePlus One that if you do want Cyanogen Mod, this should be the phone you want. Yeah. You don't need to buy like an HTC One M8 and then port over Cyanogen Mod because you won't have the same type of support. And I know it's open source, and I know there's tons of people working towards having a great software, but this is the flagship phone for me. Yeah, well, e easily done. I know that it's easily done. Uh, a lot of people kind of argue that you can put Cyanogen on any phone. This is a right. really wide support on Cyanogen, but... But this you, is the flagship, yeah. in my opinion. This is the flagship well, yeah. Cyanogen Mod phone, well, and it doesn't cost you very much. If you want to take it right out of the box and have Cyanogen and not flash it and worry about rooting and stuff like that, yeah. Everything's already here, so you don't have to worry about it. So software, I think we can or, both agree. Or it's if awesome. you're a current Android user, say if you're using like a Galaxy S4 or something, and you just want something that's more free and open and you don't want a Nexus 5, this is a great phone. I mean, I think this is... I mean, Nexus still, I think, is still the purest. I think if I had to pick, I'd probably still pick the Nexus. Better, but, This is better camera, better battery yeah. life. Uh, I would actually not pick the Nexus 5 anymore. Oh, well, Even with L. I mean, L actually improves battery life on the Nexus 5. But this is literally one of the best. Well, hardware-wise, it's better than the Nexus. Oh, yeah. But I don't know about the pure software experience. No. But uh, but if you want, but if you, I'm just saying, if you're coming from a Galaxy S4, this is a great phone. If you're coming from any phone that's not a Nexus phone and you want just a pure but not stock Android experience and you really want to customize it, this 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 is probably the best phone. Definitely, for you. definitely. Yeah. A lot of people are wondering what the battery life is like on the One Plus, and I think we both have different. Uh, experiences with the OnePlus, but I noticed that my battery life was getting better throughout time. Uh, I think a lot of people will get mad at me because my battery experience is usually based off my screen being at least 80%. I mean, if I have an awesome screen like this, I want to turn the brightness up. I don't know how people get away with uh, putting their display to 30% brightness and I put make it auto. all day. I put, on, I, put my, I put my display on auto, and I considerably got like six hours of on-screen time every time. Yeah, and mine's been kind of inconsistent. I've been getting, uh, with heavy, heavy use, I'm getting about three to four hours of on-screen time. But like he said, if you put on auto display, I can get probably at least five to six hours screen on time. And I can't say that about every phone that's nope. out there. So even though this has got a very bright panel and monster specs, it actually has decent battery life. In my testing so far, two weeks, I've been consistently getting at least four to five hours of Well, the important thing is time. we're pretty big internet. I mean, we're pretty phone user like you know we use a lot of it we yeah. use a lot of uh, apps we use a lot of uh, services and I mean my phone's never died on me on a, in, in, in a day no yeah this is definitely a full day phone for sure uh, way better than the Galaxy S5 or mm -hmm. HTC One, much better than the HTC One. And that's how I feel. I feel like the battery life is good. Um, I even feel like the battery life is better than the G3, but I mean, that's understandable because the G3 has a quad HD display, so it's right. probably sucking up some more battery, but... Oh, well, our units are not US spec, so... That's true. But battery We're life, We're not saying I think... that the G3 is better. I'm just saying that this is one of the best batteries that I've you know, used that on a daily basis is probably one of the best phones. This year, I think it's one of the better phones on battery stamina for sure. Yeah. I think uh, for a 3,000 milliamp battery, mm. definitely does its job. Even though it's not really removable, I no. think the, the back you can remove it, but you can't remove, remove the, the battery. battery. No. So to me, that's silly. I don't know why you wouldn't do that, but. Um, well, I mean, probably because you'd probably have to like break your hand to try to remove the back of this phone. For, uh, OnePlus, make, make the back easier to remove. Maybe the OnePlus 2, if we ever see that. So. If. Yeah. If. 
Um, but actually, can I deviate from that point first? Um, before we get into performance and... I, I want to talk about quality control because he's had an amazing experience with the OnePlus One. I have. I, not so much. Yeah. I mean, I love the phone. Uh, maybe it's just my luck with phones, but I mean, I've broken my LG G3. You sure I've broken my Nexus 5. And I'm pretty sure I broke this phone. Either that or it just shipped to me with some kind of quality control issue. So first of all, um, my SIM card won't get recognized all the time in this phone. Yeah, he's getting dropouts too, which is weird. Right. Like random signal dropouts. I have actually not had that with this phone, but oh, I've been using the T-Mobile. T-Mobile. I've, so. I've been using my own AT&T SIM. Like this is just from, you know, I went to an AT&T store, uh, turned off my iPhone, put a micro SIM in here. And I mean, the first couple of days, no problem. And then as I'm going on just today, actually, I had my SIM in here and uh, I picked up my phone and I looked at it and there was actually no service on here. Uh, it just had the missing SIM card icon on there. So I'm not exactly sure if I damaged the SIM contacts, but the point is I haven't had this for, for two weeks and that happened. Uh, and I had some problems at the, at the beginning actually where uh, AT&T won't actually send 4G LTE. Now that's an AT&T problem, not a OnePlus problem because it's an unknown uh, manufacturer. But my, in, my, in my quality control test for this thing, I'm not exactly sure if they have such good standards there. Yeah, and I'm not sure if that's a SIM card issue for him or not because actually I've put an AT&T SIM in here and gotten LTE. So I don't know if that's a provision issue or not, but really that's kind of besides the point. It's kind of inconsistent on the software side, so I'm not sure why he's not getting what he's getting on the... Because APN looked right, everything looked okay. But um, yeah. his, I'm not getting those random signal cutouts at all, so I don't know if that's but, a quality issue or not. Yeah, I mean, I but know. just, you know, I think this is a device issue because I've even looked it up. I mean, people people who have OnePlus Ones don't have that same problem. With so so it, just be an it, might, it just might be, you know, my bad luck. Uh, but it is something that I wanted to know. And, it, you know, it could be just affected a couple hundred units, maybe one unit because could we don't be. make that many. So what else, is there anything else that you've had a problem with so far? With Other than that, uh, no, I mean, yeah, I mean, it, nothing really feels cheap. No, nothing really creaks on here or anything. Uh, I actually dropped my uh, OnePlus uh, when yeah. I was doing the unboxing, actually. I actually uh, dropped this on concrete. And what's kind of cool about this is, if you don't know, you can see that there's a little bit of a raised lip right here on this side where the display sits. What it did was it actually absorb the impact of this. Now it does have a pretty nasty little uh, dent right here but the screen is perfectly fine and I think that's actually good because on any kind of phone like this even this Galaxy S5 right here if you think about the corner hitting this you're gonna get spider cracks everywhere this thing would have been gone but this was pure concrete and it actually absorbed you hear, that. You hear about Samsung? Gone. Gone. <laughs> Terrible. But um, this right here is a different story so I don't know if that's a good design thing or not uh, but it's actually on both sides, on the top and bottom, there's actually a lip there. So I think that was uh, purposeful, actually, in this design, which the the Find 7 does not have that, actually, in their design. If you look at the 7A no, and 7, that, there is not that. See, it taught him something right on camera. But this, I, I don't know if that was purposeful or not, but definitely for uh, durability-wise so far, I think that this has been a good device for me. So Two I've thumbs dropped, up. And no scratches on the back either, <laughs> so that's a good thing. Where I have scratches on most of my phones on the back, from laying on rocks and stuff like that. but Because uh, you know what he does. I mean, he's, he's a tree stump, that stump. If you want to see that in a shirt, leave a comment below, and we'll make that into a shirt. No. He wants a shirt. No shirt. He wants a shirt. No shirt. <laughs> anyway, moving on. Uh, Performance-wise, actually, performance has also been great. Uh, gaming, everything. Actually, uh, I think the biggest thing with this pre-production model was that the phone call quality was absolutely terrible. The a lot of people were complaining about the actual... Uh, I had a weird hissing noise. Or a whining noise. That's that's one thing. I haven't had any problems with that. Actually, I think the earpiece is loud. Uh, it's working great on the T-Mobile network, so I'm not quite sure if that's a network thing or not. But uh, super fast data speeds on this. I'm getting like 30 megabits per second down on T-Mobile. So I've had no problems with the actual phone itself. So phone call quality is good. And I think... I mean, do you have anything to add to that with phone call Just quality? Just the hissing. I don't know, it's happened every single call I got, just weird. I think a lot of people forget that these phones are phones, so if they make crappy phone calls, then it's not worth anything. So, this being an unlocked international GSM phone, I think that it actually does very well. Not being yes. carry optimized on any of these carriers, it works really well. So we're going to move on to the camera here, and um, the camera experience actually is on is very good. The I give it about a maybe. No, you think so? I think it's good. It's I, okay, 
it's better than the Nexus 5. Way but that's better. not saying much. Because the Nexus 5 camera is pretty terrible. <laughs> so you don't like the menus on the Cyanogen camera? I like I it, I like actually. the menus. They're a little confusing. Like, I hate how they kind of, uh, for example, like, if you go and see the camera here, I hate how the settings are all kind of unified for uh, for everything. Like, it took me a really long time to notice what, that video was so, actually on so the could, side. You don't know how to swipe to the left? I didn't see that. I think it's intuitive. I think it's easy Look, to use. I hate that. Okay, I mean, I understand it now. <laughs> But, but it took me forever to figure out, well, how do I change my video mode? There's no resolution size. All I saw was 13 megapixel sizes, quality is 100%, and then it took me like two days to figure out that there is my, my, my video format and I have 4K UHD and whatever. Um, funny enough, they actually give you a video codec option, which that is, is awesome. weird. And audio codec option, which is kind of weird. Do you see that? It's got AAC or you can do whatever the other thing is. Yeah, I mean, you know, that's what I mean by this. I think that this has a lot more options. It's actually very simplified. I think auto mode works fairly well. I think I it, like that. I think it auto detects uh, yeah, white, white balance and it is pretty good. It's got a high dynamic range, I think, right off the bat. But um, I mean, I kind of like how you can swipe up and down on the camera. I think that's a nice little way. I think maybe the only bad thing is that you have to keep swiping to get to maybe the mode that you want to, and that's kind of annoying. The autofocus is fast. But yeah, quick autofocus. Good dynamic range. Um, I mean, of Let's course. Let's a selfie. Let's take a selfie. Let's take a selfie in this video. Maybe we can get the camera in there too. I don't know if I can. Nah, that's that not gonna oh, work. Oh, there we go. Haha. -ha. Okay, yeah, so we just took work. a selfie. Um, the refresh rate's pretty terrible. Yeah, on there. And another thing that I'm gonna uh, tell you is that when you're recording DCI 4K, Hi, but the frames skip like crazy while you're recording, but it does not translate to video uh, at all. But when you're recording the it just stutters everywhere so you think it's broken it's messed up but it's not it looks like it's actually like showing like 15 frames a second on the, on the display yeah it is looks it bad 30 or 24 24 frames and 30. it does 24 and 30. that's weird dci is 24 frames and yeah but i UHDs. noticed that too and i'm like i was doing when i did my dci test video i was like well i hope this doesn't actually record this way because this is awful it looks when i first started recording it was stuttering everywhere it was choppy but don't worry about that it doesn't translate to video at all I, obviously you can see that in my video. just a weird quirk i don't know yeah. why it's like that but the, the dci battery? is actually pretty high quality i was actually surprised to see dci even as an option on there because no other smartphones do this right now at all so. it doesn't matter I guess it doesn't matter because I'm. Does it matter? Nobody probably cares because nobody's recording cell phone stuff but me. Nobody shoots reviews in 4K on a cell phone. Team that stuff. Oh, it's that. terrible. <laughs> and it's hard to do, by the way. But I do it because I challenge myself. But at the same time, I think that if. Uh, there are some autofocus issues on this when I'm actually recording video. Sometimes it doesn't autofocus quite right, and then you'll have to stop the video and then refocus and then restart the video. I mean, that's just what I get because I've recorded a lot of videos with this, and it just that's the problem I'm having so far. But I'm pretty sure that updates will fix the camera app, but that's probably the biggest thing I've come across so far is just the inconsistency with autofocus. Even though autofocus is really fast, autofocus with video, not with photos. Photos, very quick, but autofocus on video and there's no way to lock exposure either you can actually hold and it down and it will not because do that. he loves auto like locking exposure i love yeah but you gotta have you gotta have focus lock and yeah. a you gotta have ae lock you have to i mean if you don't you can't shoot video with this but what's great is that it doesn't autofocus very frequently so you can actually get a uh, good video with it because it doesn't sit there and just keep autofocusing like the Galaxy S5 or some of the other cameras out there so so it's good that it's bad but it's good it's possible. So, this is the question. Would you buy this again? Yes. Well, you already bought one. But if you were not a tech consumer, if you were not a tech reviewer, would you actually buy one? I think I would. I actually recommended this phone to a lot of people because there's a lot of people that are trying to get away from traditional carrier two-year contracts. I think that two-year contracts are pretty... They're pretty terrible, actually. The They're way ridiculous. We, the way we do um, things in this country yeah. with it, because uh, you know, most most countries, the UK, anywhere else, they're usually they're going to buy their phones off contract and find the best service. But what's crappy about the United States is that you don't even get a discount on your service if you buy the phone outright. I mean, it's atrocious. You pay the same <laughs> kind yeah. of yeah. See, he's making them choke. I mean, it's atrocious. <laughs> I mean, but at the same time, 
Uh, I think that a lot of people are going to straight talk or these prepaid $50 a month type things. And I think this is a perfect phone for your prepaid. Like, I mean, even prepaid T-Mobile, they got some great plans. That's what I use right now to uh, test these phones out. So I think this is a fantastic option because it's unlocked GSM. <laughs> but it unlocked GSM, you know, for T-Mobile and AT&T. Of course, you can't use this on Verizon or, you know, Sprint or anything. But but I think it's a great option for prepaid because you're getting a high-end smartphone for 300 bucks. And I, I guess don't want to say prepaid. I want to say this is a great option regardless. Just period, I guess. Yeah. I have concerns. I think they're device-specific. This is a kick-ass Android phone. Yeah. And I agree. I think I agree with that. I don't think I have anything really terrible to say uh, I even think that the headphone output is good too you got equalizer that you can kind of get into and I think That's even gimmick, but, but I think even sound wise it actually this you know because there's some phones you can't lie there's some phones that have really terrible headphone output there is yeah and I'm telling you there are some terrible ones where you can barely hear them and they're terrible but actually this works out just fine uh, I've tested this out and I think it sounds great and the speaker uh, these dual speakers on the bottom I don't like the placement where the speakers are but they're loud and they're definitely passable so it's nothing like this thing the Galaxy S5 has this terrible single speaker on the back you can barely hear this so it's really hard to go to something like this but actually these stereo speakers on the bottom just don't like the placement of them but they are loud and I think they're good for so good for media consumption so when you're yes. watching video or anything like this I think you'll like this as well so I mean do you have anything else to add if you can buy it, buy it. If you can't, write to them. Tell them. Yeah, tell them I need an invite, man. And and if we ever do get any invites, then we'll let you know. But I mean, invites-wise, this is a very Danny difficult will. situation. I will. I'm because I'm nice. Danny's yeah. me. Difficult to get. Difficult to get invites. Uh, I know there's a lot of other companies out there. I think even Pocket Now. Come on, some of the even bigger companies are trying to get some invites to run contests with. And um, hopefully, maybe we'll get one of these phones and maybe give them away or something. Yeah. You never know. Maybe I'll give away this phone. Or maybe not this phone because this one's happening. Yeah, the SIM card If we can figure out either. what's going on with this and it's actually just my SIM card, then we'll give this one away. Yeah. Well, we'll figure it out. Well, hold Marco to that because I'm not giving mine away. Well, actually, if you wanted one, it would have a big dent on the side. And I don't right. think you'd want this and one. And mine, mine is still in perfect condition. So I take care of my stuff. It's okay. Right. SIM doesn't work, so it's not worth anything. My iPhone. It's works. a brick. It's a brick. We'll anyway, test that. but this is just something that we wanted to do. We wanted to start right. this series and just sit there and talk about a phone like we would normally talk. We, you know, we always kind of are real formal on these videos and uh, especially on our tech reviews, we're really serious about things. Yeah. And this is just how we would talk about a phone. I mean, I mean, what do you guys think about the OnePlus One? I mean, do you want to still buy this phone? I mean, do you think that this phone will be relevant in the next two months when you're actually able to buy this phone? I mean, once if this phone, once this phone goes onto the market, do you think this phone will be even relevant with so many other phones probably coming out later? I mean, right, right. I mean, there's a new Android flagship like every two months. So I mean, I don't know. Is I think the biggest be... concern is the X One. X plus one, or whatever you call it. X squared. The new Moto X. Moto X plus one. That's I mean, be the biggest thing. And the Nexus, whatever, that they make it. If there is a Nexus 6, I mean, right. we all probably want to buy that. If it's anything like the LG G3, it's going to be smoking. Because that LG G3 is yeah. awesome. That, that like, would be tough to beat. I love um, the LG G3. I mean, so, yeah. So, how about you leave us a comment. Or you can follow us on Twitter, at the Pro Consumer. Link. Text. Everything is around us. Somewhere in this video, you'll find a way to do it. <laughs> yeah. So make sure you follow us there, and any questions that you have, you can ask us, especially about this phone or anything in general. Right. We'll make sure we answer those, and thanks yeah, for watching. Yeah, what? yeah. He's at Super Scientific. I am. I'm at, at Marco M. Hanna. It's my Twitter name. That's his Twitter name. Yeah, we had too many accounts for you to keep up yes. with. Yes. But make sure you follow us on any of those, mm -hmm. and hope you enjoyed this video. We're just sitting here talking about the OnePlus One, and let me know what you think about it. All right? Subscribe. Subscribe. And subscribe, yes, and subscribe to this channel. Let me know what you think about this video format. You like it? You don't like it? Let us know. All right? You like it. Like it. You probably like it. But we'll talk to you later. <laughs> Bye.